All right, gentlemen, today we're going to be looking at this magazine that I just got, which is supposedly a 1903 380 caliber pocket hammerless magazine. Um, this one right here is a 32 caliber of the 1903. Um, the 1903 380 is also called the 380, I mean the uh, 1908 pocket hammerless to kind of distinguish it from the 1903 in that it's a 380 instead of 32 ACP. But uh, the 1908 is actually uh, the vest pocket. But anyway, let's take a look at these two. Because um, this one, I'm not sure if it's real or not. Uh, I originally bought it and it was supposed to be a uh, reproduction or a fake or the, the guy doesn't know if it was real or not. And when I looked at it, to me it looked real. Um, but we're going to compare it to a, a 32 ACP um, pre-war magazine that I know for sure is authentic. And this one also looks real to me, but um, the seller didn't think that it was uh, was authentic. But what we're going to do is take it apart, clean it, and compare it to the 32 ACP, and we'll see how she looks. So the first thing that I noticed when I saw this in the auction, um, I noticed that you see the, the follower over here is flat on the tip. Um, it's not usually like that. I've never seen any like that um, that are flat like that. So I think that might be one reason why the seller might have been cautious about the authenticity of it or not. Maybe this follower is not authentic, but it looks like the thing is upside down. So, because, wa watch me try and compress this thing. It hits right over here. The little lip just clips right on the side. And you can see somebody is kind of trying to force it up and down. It kind of took off the corners a little bit over there. Um, but otherwise, this magazine is in pretty good condition. So, let's take it apart and see. Um, this one right here actually came original with this gun. And it's a little strange because this gun's actually from 1913, but the mag is aged to about mm, maybe late 30s. The the weird thing is that this gun was supposedly purchased new with this, so I, I don't know how that how that actually happened or not. If that's the case, or if this is just an aftermarket magazine that, or not an aftermarket, but a magazine that was purchased later in this this gun's life. Um, but let's take a look at this one for now. Let's see. I'm gonna try and get this thing out. I guess when you push it on the back, it doesn't really hit too much, but see we'll push it down from the back I think this would feed around fine if, if it's like that but we'll find out we'll take a look and see if there's anything weird going on inside here the spring doesn't look in, to be in phenomenal condition but that's all right we're gonna take it apart and find out it's a little tighter in there I might have to I might have to compress the spring a little bit more okay Yeah, it might be just because it's, it's in backwards that uh, the reason it's so tight. Have you seen my other video? Um, this is just a, a nylon, a piece of nylon because I don't want to scratch up the follower. And this is just a brass pick that I use um, to catch the, uh, or retain the spring inside there. So I'm going to try to push this guy a little bit more down. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, good right there. All right, that should do it. There we go. Bingo. There you go. You see the, the other tip. It's kind of... <laughs> that's weird looking too though. Because that is round, but it's also not perfectly round. I don't know how to, how to put that, but it looks like it matches more appropriately. And I think this is the correct size. So probably what happened was somebody took this apart to clean it. And um, they put it in backwards. So, so far everything looks authentic to me, but I'm going to take apart the original mag so we can compare the followers and everything side by side as well. Um, now I'm going to keep my hand over the side um, while I pull the brass rod out just so the spring doesn't go flying. Okay. There it comes. And the spring looks fine as well. I don't have a 380 version of this, uh, the pocket hammerless, so I can't really tell, tell you for sure or not because I don't have any other any other uh, 380 magazines to compare to but if you look at the base plate the font that's on here and the depth of the engraving it doesn't match this one but that doesn't mean that it's not authentic because I have a bunch I've seen a bunch of different ones that look pretty pretty similar to this that were a 32 ACP magazine um, and the font and the and the the color of the bluing on the bottom looks pretty much identical to factory stuff that I've seen so far. And this follower looks 
to be original too. I mean, this magazine spring looks to be original. It looks a little bit dirty, but we're gonna clean it up and see. Let me take a peek in the inside. Yeah, it's a little crusty inside there. There's, um, looks like some brass, brass shavings or something inside there and some dirt and some surface rust, but it's pretty consistent with the, the exterior here of the magazine. This one, this one is in pretty similar condition. Actually, this magazine spring is probably in worse condition because this one had rust all over it. So when I first got that, it was totally rusty. So I had to take some steel wool and just grind it down. So let's get some, uh, let's get some stuff to clean this off with. I'm going to use Break Free CLP for this one because this one looks a little bit crustier than the last one I did. I usually use this uh, Gun X stuff, but it doesn't do quite as good job of cleaning everything out properly. So I'm just going to clean the inside out with this this patch here. And you can see I already, already picked up a bunch of gunk. It looks like it looks dirt, really, but maybe some rust or something like that. I don't know. I really want to get down all the way into the bottom. You can see this magazine is a little dirtier than the last one I cleaned. It's kind of interesting because somebody somebody had taken this magazine apart. So I'm not. I wonder how long they've been shooting it with the follower upside down like that. As you can see, the this is the correct side where the magazine should be fed off of. This is the incorrect side, and it's it definitely has a little bit of wear over there, like somebody was feeding the rounds off of it when it was the wrong direction. But that's not a big deal. I just want to get this thing cleaned up and. We can get a nice comparison to this one because this one's actually all clean dirty so well it's clean enough but let's see yeah that's pretty dirty it's not too bad I mean this things look like it's looks like it's been used to shoot so it's not a bad thing so I'm just taking the the CLP soaked patch and just kind of running it on the outside too to get any any imperfections and impurities off the, the outside surface if you look at that fault, uh, the base plate, wow, the base plate on this one is really pretty shiny. This is one of the nice ones that I've seen. You can see a little bit of the chipping over there because that's where the uh, heel mag catch, right over there on the bottom. The heel mag catch on the bottom of the gun, just it's unavoidable to get that kind of wear on there if you ever put the magazine in the gun. So if you see one without it, without the wear, then the magazine was actually never used in the in the gun at all. So this one here, I'm going to try and go through the whole spring piece by piece to see if I can get that off. But you can see on the bottom over here, there's some surface rust. So and it's a little bit thicker than I'll be able to get off with just a patch. So I might have to come back and get after that with some steel wool. Because I don't want to leave any rust on top of there because eventually that rust is going to get bad. It could lead to the spring wearing out, some feeding problems. But the spring isn't very expensive, so it's not like it's that big of a deal. Um, this magazine I actually got for a really good deal. It basically is the same price as you buying an aftermarket magazine. And it looks like the real deal. So, I mean, if it works like the real deal and everything looks pretty consistent, I would say this thing is real. But we'll, we'll take a comparison and, and look side by side. One second. This is, upper part of this magazine is not too bad. It seems like just whatever was at, that, um, at the tip over there was really kind of crusty. Let's see. The rest of the spring is nice and smooth, just that surface rust in the end. And I don't see any other problems with it. It's actually cleaning up pretty shiny and nice. It just looked like it had a little bit of carbon or something on top of the spring. And you can see that the condition of the magazine itself is actually pretty nice. The bluing is nice. The uh, the white steel on the top isn't really messed up. As usually this, this thing starts to get blackened a little bit when you start shooting it a lot because that part of it gets heated up and collects a lot of the carbon. So the more you shoot this, the blacker it'll get because you can kind of see over here, it's kind of darkened a little bit. As this one was originally um, a lot whiter of a steel than that, um, than it is now. All right, I'm going to clean off this follower as well. And the weird thing is that like the Numric Corporation, uh, Gun Parts Corporation, they, uh, they sell this follower as the same. The 380 and the 32 ACP follower is the same, but it really... Um, I gotta get my calipers out, but it doesn't look the same to me. This this one obviously is wider. This is the 380, and uh, the magazines won't fit in the gun. So this 380 magazine is a little bit wider than this 32, and it, it just won't insert into the gun. I know that there's the uh, some people have have said that the you can convert these into 380, the 32 ACP, just with the magazine swap and the barrel. Um, 
I'm not sure if that's real or not because you can't insert this magazine. I have heard that you could insert some 380 rounds into this, maybe, but I don't know. That's got to be a tight squeeze, and I, I don't really want to try that myself. And I don't have a 380 barrel to test with it anyway. I think the extractor and the ejector and everything like that would work fine, but I don't I don't have a barrel on the magazine. I just don't want to test it with that. So maybe, maybe I'll save that for another day. All right, so everything looks... Um, Pretty well back together. I'm just going to take this clean patch and kind of wipe it off just so that we can get a little bit better view of the mag. I'm going to wipe my hands off too because I got the CLP all over it as well. But CLP, this break free CLP is kind of dangerous to leave in thick layers in this magazine because I had problems with it gumming it up before. Well, it's not dangerous. I mean, it's just going to make you clean it a little bit more. It, it does a really good job of cleaning the mag, but if you leave it wet in here, it's going to start collecting all the powder, powder blow by gases and things like that. And it gets crusty pretty fast relative if you just left it dry. So it's always best, in my opinion, to keep the mags dry, even if it is a little bit susceptible to surface rust and whatnot, um, because you want the mag to perform, right? I mean, that's the key. You want it to perform. If it looks pretty, that's, that's nice. But uh, if it doesn't work right, it's no good. Especially with a magazine and a, and a gun that's kind of old, you know, you want everything consistent and working properly. So, right, let's put this thing back together and then we can actually, no, let's look at it side by side. I'm going to take the other one apart just so we can get a nice comparison. So, we'll leave it like this just so you can see the pieces. Okay, I'm going to capture that. This got part two. Hmm. Also tight. There we go. And she's out. Cover this up, spring pops out. Let's see, here's the follower. Now this follower right here, I actually shot this gun a lot, but um, yeah, so I don't know how Gun Parts Corporation can say these guys are the same, because look at that. Obviously that one's longer on that end. These sides are a little bit closer, but you can still see that the 380 guy is longer, wider. Actually it's not wide, not longer, but it's, it's definitely wider. And this is the back portion that's flat. Also wider on the 380 version. But if you can look at the finishes on these guys and the way that the edges are beveled and um, you can see this, the tip over here that's nice and rounded off. The workmanship looks pretty similar. And the color of the bluing is almost, almost identical on these things. It's a little hard to see because I got some CLP in my hands, but... Uh, they're pretty close and this one right here it's just beat up and has a little bit more surface rust than this one this one is nice and uh, not too beat up so it doesn't look like this one was shot as much as this one was now let's check the magazine springs um, again obviously the 380 ones looking a little beefier too but the design of the springs is identical and this is the original spring and you can kind of see it I don't know if you can see it on the camera but there's still a little bit of surface rust in that I couldn't get out but the 380 spring is definitely beefier. You can see it's a little thicker. But the hook portions are the same. See the bottom pieces are the same. And then let's take a look at the magazines themselves. Now this is the important part here, I think, because this is where you really be able to tell. And the way that I can tell always on these guys is, uh, if you can see, I brought this magazine out in particular because it has this nice... Uh, kind of blue-green Kubrick effect going on over here, like Kubrick oxidation. And um, I don't know, some kind of byproduct of the bluing where it has the white steel on the top and they kind of dipped it in the bluing tank or whatnot. And it created this kind of greenish tint to the bluing in there. And not all of the magazines have it that are original, but most of the ones of this particular generation do have that nice, uh, that nice effect to it, kind of iridescent look to it. And when I first saw this one, it 
has that effect slightly, but it's not nearly as pronounced as this one. I've seen these magazines with both the really pronounced Cooper oxidation effect and without it. Um, this particular generation of magazine with this kind of font, um, I've noticed that these ones don't have as much of that green oxidation on it. Um, I'm not sure if that's because I've only seen fake ones. Now, if this is a fake one, then please tell me because my conclusion right now is that this thing is authentic um, from everything that I've seen and comparing it to a real one, even though this is in a 380, this one, this one is authentic, it's a 32 ACP and I know for sure. This one just looks like it has, hasn't been used nearly as much. But you can see on the back over here, this is from, from inserting it in and out of the gun. The heel mag release kind of scrapes along the back and the front, um, the front of the mag scrapes on the inside of the frame too when it's coming up. So you'll be able to see that even on this one right here, you can see the scraping on the front and you'll see some scraping on the back and that's just totally unavoidable with the kind of gun that it is. Um, so it, even if the, the gun was hardly ever fired or unfired, you're going to still see that kind of effect on the magazine because if they're taking the magazine out of the gun, it's going to have that. Now I want to shoot up, I want to point out over here in the back, you can definitely see that Cooper effect going on right there and it, uh, it looks nice. And on this side over here, there's kind of like a, a, a weird transition thing in there, but you can tell underneath that top darker layer that there is that Cooper effect coming through a little bit. And same with this side, but it's a little bit less pronounced. Um, and I think, as far as I'm concerned, that looks really authentic to me, having seen maybe 20 or 30 of this particular model. The fake ones are the, the reproduction ones that I've seen that they try and reproduce this two-tone effect. They can never get that 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 little green Kubrick effect in there, and whenever they try, it just doesn't look doesn't look as nice as this. And my conclusion in this case is going to be that this guy's authentic. Um, let's put this let's put all these guys back together, and we'll have a look with them fully assembled. So I'm going to put the 32 ACP guy first together. First thing is like the other video that I did. We got to compress the spring into the magazine and capture it with the uh, some kind of punch or in my case I'm using a brass cleaning rod but yeah like I said it's a little hard to compress on because that there's no uh, magazine follower to compress on inside there that pushes a, an even pressure on the spring so I'm gonna keep the rounded the rounded edge to the front flat side inwards insert that in Take the pick out and we're already in business in that one. That one just popped right into place. So that guy's done. All right, here we go again. This is the flat bottom over here and the little hooked end goes at the front. So let's put this in here. And again, I'm gonna retain it. Hopefully this one works a little better, but this one is a little thicker. So we'll see if this cooperates or not. So far, so good. And then we're going to put the flat side downward. We're going to change it from the way that was originally received because that wasn't correct. Stick that guy on there. Remove the brass pick. Now this one didn't seat properly, so I'm going to have to use a pick to uh, fix the spring. There we go. Springs fixed. Let's check the movement on this guy. Oh, much better. See, it doesn't bind up on the tip anymore over there because it would bind up if you just press it down like this. Now that, it wouldn't happen if you're putting a round in because you're getting more pressure on the backside. But if you just push it straight down, it should also just go down. Because this one over here also just goes on fine even if you push it on the front. It doesn't, it doesn't bind up or anything on the tip. But this one, uh, when it was reversed, it would definitely bind up on the tip. So now that this thing's all back together, looking at the color of the bluing, the condition of the magazine, the font on the base, the shininess and the, um, the color of the bluing on the base too, the overall construction of the magazine is just authentic to me. So I'm going to have to say this guy is authentic and I got a smoking deal on it. All right, YouTube.